Hey everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about levels, valve guide levels to be specific. Let me be on the level with you when I'm talking about levels. A lot of people misunderstand what a level is. It's actually a, a calibrated device to put us in a specific plane level with what we know to be level in this world. However, levels don't come pre-calibrated, and if, even if you do calibrate them over time, uh, jostling them around in the machine shop, operator to operator, they will come out of calibration. So on specific valve guide leveling, Goodson is very proud to offer our VGL100. This is a valve guide level that we've designed many years ago, and we use uh, the Sterrett uh, vial with the aluminum case. And uh, just, a, just a note of, uh, of information for you, this vial is actually filled with alcohol. And uh, if you've ever noticed your bubble getting larger and larger every morning when you come in, chances are that you've got a hairline fracture in this vial. And because it is alcohol, it'll start to evaporate. And <laughs> you'll notice that because that bubble keeps getting bigger every morning you come in. And one morning you'll come in and there won't be any bubble at all simply because the alcohol is completely evaporated. So kind of keep that in mind. But I've digressed a little bit. The VGL100 is specifically designed for the valve guide leveling in most any uh, seat and guide machine. It's got a unique design to it. In other words, we incorporated a V uh, receiving group here so we can accommodate any top size pilot. 375, as I've told you many, many times, is the world's most popular top size valve guide pilot, followed by 385, 437, 389, 390, and even way back in the time, quickly had a .406 top valve guide pilot. With this V groove here and this spring-loaded uh, clip, we're able to put that on any valve guide pilot, regardless of its top size, and that's what makes this valve guide level very unique. Back to the point of calibration. A level, if you've got a perfectly leveled machine, that, that's probably the easiest way to, to start because you've got these little adjustment uh, bolts here, and let me show you. And we have to move these up and down according to which direction we need that bubble to go because our result is we need this bubble or this uh, uh, valve guide level assembly to repeat itself every time we turn it 180 degrees. Now, if I'm off one line left to right in this plane, and I turn it 180 degrees, if I'm calibrated, I'll be off one line the opposite direction. The way I can uh, calibrate that is come back again to my original spot and take not that whole amount of differential between those two points, but only one half of that amount. And then lock my screws back down set it back onto my uh, post to confirm where I started, rotate 180 degrees, and then I should have that repeatability if I've done everything correctly. At the end of that exercise, I can then clip it into my seat and guide machine like I have set up here right now. This is a, you know, a 35-year-old PH2000. Good integrity, good quill integrity. So that's why I like using it for these demonstrations because if I can make all of our late model tooling work on a machine that's 35 years old, well, you know it's going to work uh, uh, on these uh, later sophisticated machines that you get from Rottler and Winona Van Norman and Surdy and Newen and um, uh, the Robbins machines, the new Robbins machines that are out there in the marketplace as well. But I first need to air float this table out of my way because I don't have enough room for everything I need to put in here. This particular machine came with a drill chuck, number three taper. I just stick it right up in there, lock it into position. I can grab about any valve guide pilot that I have here. And I don't have to clamp that, you know, with the strength of Superman or anything like that. Just a, a quick snug, maybe grab your, your wrench and give it another little snug in that regard. And then I can take my valve guide level, as I was saying, it's got that V groove right there. I can clip that right on. And now I can take a reading front to back and left to right. In this particular case, I'm about uh, whoa, just a wee bit over one line going that direction. So I need to actually bring this bubble towards me by raising this one in. I go to the other side, 
and double check that again, I'll tell you what, our people in receiving that do a semi-calibration on these actually done a pretty good job. This, this level is dead on, so I can repeat that back and forth knowing full well that my level is calibrated. Now here's the next part I want you to be aware of because we level our level first. Then I level the machine to that level. And that's where, well, you know, you got to get the old wrench out, the old 15 16th for this particular machine. Get down on your hands and knees, climb underneath here, and hit those jack screws down at the bottom. Jack screws got a leveling plate that they're going into so you're not digging into a, the concrete or wooden floor in your machine shop and they've got a locking on them, so when you make that adjustment, you lock everything down. So then you'll actually level this machine front to back as well as left to right, and you'll bring that bubble perfectly in between those two major lines. And when you're done, when it's all done, if you've done everything correctly, then you'll be able to rotate this level 360 degrees, and that bubble will not move. Then you're spot on all the way through. So. I've already taken uh, a little pre-setup prior to this video to get this thing calibrated, to get this machine leveled to that level, and now I'm going to level this cylinder head to that level, so I've got everything synced up. Level is level, machine is leveled to the level, and now the workpiece will then be leveled by that level, and that should put me exactly where I need to go ahead and drill out this false guy. So I'll make a quick adjustment on this particular cradle, and it has different adjustments than maybe the cradle you have at your shop. But if you happen to have one of these, these pinion knobs here in the middle could give me that left to right action I'm looking for. And for my front to back, that's done right here with this. Just a quick bump. And I've got that right where I want it. So now my level's level. Uh, this particular machine has a drill, ch a drill driven chuck. It's just a solid precision number three taper. It's got a socket head set screw that holds the tool in place. Goes up there, locks itself into position. And then I have this 11 30 seconds core drill reamer. And I'm going to drill out this valve guide right here. Make sure I've got enough throat opening here. Raise my head. Get my tool in position. Bring the quill around. Open up that chuck. Take some pressure, side pressure off of that tool that I had in there. Lock him down really good. Now I can bring this over, bring my head over as well. Lock that quill back into position. And then I can come right on down. Center on that guide with the pilot part of this core drill reamer. I like to give, leave the air on, move the quill up and down so I know I don't have any drag on that. I'm all locked down in this position. Uh, I'm going to run this through as a, as a drill and a reamer all at the same time. And I'm going to open that hole up to half inch, 500,000. Safety first. Don't forget your safety glasses or safety shield. Turn this on a clockwise position. Generally run it about on the second speed of the low RPM gearbox. I'm going to make, make contact. And just go So now I'm ready to drive in my new false guide, whether it be another cast iron replacement or a bronze or manganese bronze or a phosphorus bronze uh, replacement. I can knock in my new valve guide. I can set that uh, oil clearance in that valve. And then my next operation is to deal with my valve seats so I can put the multiple angles either through seat grinding on the workbench or better yet, with a 3D fast cut, which we're going to show you in one of our future episodes. So same head will come back out. 
have that new valve guide in there. So the takeaway I want you to have today is the valve guide levels are critically important to putting in a straight valve guide. If you've ever ground your valve seat after you put in a guide and it's fat on one side and skinny on the other, you know what that means? You put the guide in crooked. So again, uh, a level is like a is like a pair of calipers. It's like a dial board gauge. It's like a set of micrometers. You got to measure or you're just going to guess. So always keep that in mind. The VGL 100 valve guide level from your friends here at Goodson Tools and Supplies. I want to thank you for watching. If you want, you can catch us on the web at Goodson.com or better yet, call us 1-800-533-8010. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.